pledges, promises, partnerships and of course politics. Welcome to the COP28 climate change gathering here in Dubai. Or if you're a fan of Greta Thunberg, the latest in a series of 30 years or so of blah blah blah. While the Nobel Peace Prize winner, Professor Mohan Munasinghe, is a veteran of these kind of gatherings. He's the former vice chair of the Intergovernmental Conference on Climate Change. So, does he think Greta has a point? She does have a point and on the other hand she does not. But uh, the point is that we could have done much better. And that's the key point. Uh, the positive side is that we have persisted. They didn't s stop at COP5 and say, this is hopeless, let's stop. Okay? So as long as we keep meeting, although there's a lot of hot air and greenhouse gas emissions in the process, we are making some progress. And for this COP, I think the, for the Global South, the most uh, encouraging development is the loss and damage fund. And I think the hosts, the UAE, uh, did a wonderful gesture by just putting down a hundred million, which, by the way, uh, they are not historically from since 1850 among the biggest emitters. It's only recently. But nevertheless, they said, okay, we will put out 100 million and they have virtually, I would say, shamed some of the Western countries who were historically big emitters to at least make a token contribution. Some of them are actually very niggardly, but they have contributed. How important do you think that is, that equalizing, that recognition of climate debt, as it were, to the global south? This is under the rubric of climate justice, which I have been espousing for maybe the last 20 years or more since I worked for the IPCC. And the essence of this is that it's the north that has emitted most of the carbon that is in the atmosphere, but the impacts will be felt mostly in the south. Uh, and there is something manifestly unfair that the poor should bear the burden of actions by the rich. So I'm saying there's all kinds of injustice and other things going on. And we have a lot of preaching saying everybody must reduce their emissions, whether you're emitting a paltry amount or a large amount. Mm. There must be a better balance in this on the mitigation side. So how do you measure the success then of a, of a conference such as COP28? What's the prism through which you're looking at success or failure or progress? I think uh, one has to look incrementally in the sense uh, that you're building. That's the, the, the dynamic. Mm. If you're moving forward, that's a plus. If you're not moving forward fast enough, that's a minus. So very simply, I mean, the IPCC has provided some scenarios on uh, avoiding 1.5 degrees Celsius and then 2 degrees and so on. Um, I am very sorry to say that we've missed the bus for 1.5. Mm. People still talk about it, but the trajectory, even despite the slight pause we got from COVID, mm. that hasn't helped uh, because we are back on thing. So uh, even if we can't reach 1.5, I think some of the recent developments in technology, and this is why at this COP I'm focusing less on the negotiations, much more on the doers, the business community. Mm. I mean, for example, companies like Huawei, I've talked to some of the solar um, companies uh, and so on, and uh, also the country efforts. Uh, for example, I think China is doing a lot. Uh, much more than they're talking, unlike other countries. Uh, so those kinds of things show a dynamic of progress. But we are falling short of the 1.5 degree target. We might make the 2 degree target. I hope so, because anything beyond that will have serious implications for the global south. Mm as well as the north, by the way, but south in particular, and this is where the loss and damage fund. See, that's a fallback, that these are poor people. 
they are going to be starving if you don't want environmental refugees not by the thousand by the millions crowding into your country help them in situ so it's actually in the interests of the the west and the north as it were to have the global Absolutely. south and going back to that technology point then do you think you can have real progress towards avoiding a two degree rise for instance without technological advances is this technology really going to be at the heart of the success that the the world needs to achieve well technology is going to be a uh, prerequisite mm -hmm. there are other factors don't forget uh, the sustainable development goals which i also help to design in a very modest way uh, universally accepted by all countries climate is only one of 17 sustainable development goals and it reminds us this is a holistic framework we have to solve all the problems together so you need unity among the stakeholders everybody on the planet but you also need uh, a comprehensive approach to tackle all the problems together you cannot have one lobby saying my problem is more important mm -hmm. let's only do this it just won't work piecemeal one of the mantras here um Huawei's mantra at COP28 is around the the acronym ICT the abbreviation ICT standing for innovate collaborate yes. transform how are we doing on all those three not we Huawei how are we collectively doing on innovation collaboration which you've touched on and transformation the innovation side as you said is if you look at the leaders it's moving rapidly and particularly in in the area of digital technology but maybe in some of the others like biotech and so on mm. it could turn out to be a frankensteinian kind of exercise but it's got fingers uh, crossed it does yeah. it for now yeah. as you said it's it's a question of how you use that innovation mm -hmm. and the collaboration side the implementation is is extremely important to take sustainable solutions and to apply them across the board and for that i think to have good pilots mm. uh, and examples and then disseminate them is extremely important the transformation depends also very much on the leadership because it's a leadership particularly in western countries that are framing the narrative and they are very influential so it requires leadership to really Absolutely. start reframing it as yeah. you say in the way that's positive just final question i started by asking you about greta thunberg and whether she has a point do we need 17 greta thunbergs one for each of the sdgs to kick start some momentum it's not exactly greta thunberg but we need champions let me let me put it that way in the sense that we need the champions but we need them broad minded they can build uh, a network that sounds like you need innovators collaborators and transformers absolutely on that's that a note. good <laughs> slogan